95.3 Bob FM. I'm Eric Wake with you. It is our award-winning series, Talk Shop with a Cop. So happy and proud to be able to have Officer Michael Thomas. He's the Chief Deputy Officer of Carroll County Sheriff's Department, and he is back with me today. Officer Thomas, how you doing? Doing great, thank you. It is so great to have you here, my friend. Yeah, it's a pleasure. And so spring is, we've kind of gotten a little taste of it here and there. Uh, yes, and then <laughs> winter comes right back. I know. I, I about freaked out when I had snow this morning. I, I know. I walked out. Did like, you? Oh, man. <laughs> not again. Thing. I was like, I'm not leaving the house till the sun comes out. <laughs> and melts some of this. So, uh, but uh, I was going to ask you about this, too. Of course, uh, the roads, especially here in Tippecanoe County, um, with all the plowing and everything that's been done, I mean, they're just awful. Yeah, so road construction is going to be major this year. Right, yeah. And I was on some gravel roads earlier, and they're just so soft, and it wants to throw you and everything. So you got to use a little caution when, you know, driving on those gravel roads. And I know Tiffany County don't have as many probably as we do, but, um, yeah, all around we're going to probably see an upbeat in construction starting soon. And, yeah, definitely got to be careful. And and just be aware of that. So I, I, I always tell people... Uh, prepare for it and take a little bit of extra time because there's Absolutely. going to be some one lane roads and like you said up in Carroll County I mean it's farm country there are a lot of gravel roads right and uh, with all of uh, the plowing and and everything that goes that goes on with that you get those washboards in there and it's going right. to take a lot to be able to fix those roads and smooth them out again yeah the county highway they're going to do the best job that they can but it's going to take some time so we just ask people to have patience and you know they'll get to them when they when they can get to them and uh, just drive drive slowly and cautiously and you'll you'll make it just fine and you're going to make it just fine and especially the wear and tear on your car that's the thing oh, absolutely I, i'm surprised i have not gotten pulled over for drunk driving <laughs> just because i'm swerving all over the place to miss all of the potholes <laughs> right to protect my tires and on top of that with all the wind we've had and yeah, the going wind. back and forth yeah, that is the one thing that I do not like, Michael. No. I am not, yeah. I yeah. mean, I even come from Idaho where it is uh, literally a wind tunnel. <laughs> yes. And uh, I, I, the wind is not my friend. I don't mind a nice breeze in the summertime, but uh, I'm not yeah. a big wind fan. I don't know how the, those um, guys that, and gals that drive those big trucks do it because I don't just in the little SUV that I have, it blows me all over the roadway. And yeah. I can't imagine trying to keep one of those big, big trucks on the road with those that. Those 18 wheelers, especially when they've got two or three trailers behind oh, them. Oh, absolutely, yeah. That's crazy, right? <laughs> yeah. Well, they're heroes, that's for sure, our that, truckers. That's right. I guarantee you, they sure have been uh, always, but especially during the pandemic. Oh, they, they yeah, they've been a blessing. They have been a blessing. Getting us the things we need. They sure are. So thank your, thank your, uh, your truck drivers out there whenever you get an opportunity, because uh, they really kept our country moving, made sure that we had the supplies that we needed. And instead. With, with gas prices the way they are, they're still doing it. Isn't that outrageous? It is. Outrageous. It looks like they are going to start to come down, though. Um, and so a lot of the Western countries now are going to start opening their reserves. Oh, good. Uh, so yeah, I hope we can thing. see a little relief for that, especially for those guys, because I know they're paying outrageous prices for their crazy uh, fuel. Crazy. And, you know, diesel is so much cheaper to be able to process than the gasoline that we normally put in our car. It's outrageous how much uh, <laughs> diesel is so high. Yeah, it never used to be that way. It used never. to be cheaper it than the gasoline. It was always cheaper. Mm -hmm. It was always cheaper. Yeah, yeah, absolutely crazy. And, of course, uh, this month it is Child Abuse Awareness Month. It is. And, you know, child abuse comes in many different forms. That's a great question or a great um thing that you just brought up there you know child abuse can be not just people tend to think child abuse is just physical but right. you know child abuse can be mental it can be uh negligence uh it can it can come in many different forms and we always encourage people that if they see it you know tell us yeah you know let somebody know right because if we don't know about it uh, it's just going to keep going on. And one of the things that uh, with, with child abuse, and, and it's also sexual uh, assault month, you know, um, they need to uh, try to let us know because if we can stop that at a young age, then that will help them from having mental problems later on in life. Absolutely. And, and that's what it really, we need to get that taken care of so they don't have those problems later in life. Yeah, I'm a huge um, advocate of protecting our children. I talk about it on the air all the time. Domestic Violence Month is in October. Um, and I think that it's something that uh, everybody should be aware of all year long. Right. And especially our kids, because as you well know, being a law officer, I've seen it my myself, uh, you know, um, 
it, it seems to come around when you have kids that are abused, whether it's mental, physical, or all the above, all of a sudden it repeats itself. It does. And that's why we need to get in there with them at a young age and get them the mental health that they need so yeah. that they, they don't fall into that vicious cycle growing up. And there's a lot of it that goes on that we don't know about that goes undetected until later on in life, then they start coming out. So if we can get that at an early age, uh, we'll have a much healthier population uh, yeah. when they get older. And it's so important to be able to uh, uh, let kids know, no matter what age they are, um, and even adults, if you're suffering from abuse, there's help out there. You can get out of that situation. And especially if you are a parent that is suffering from abuse, don't let your children be a part of that. It's really time to be able to take action. Don't live in fear because there is help. There's hope out there. And there are uh, facilities, people, law enforcement, and so many different varieties of ways to be able to protect them. Right. And that's one of the things that we're trying to do is take away the stigma of mental health. Because yes. everybody has something in their life at some point. And right. Don't be ashamed of it. Go and get that help. Don't, you know. I know it, it can be a little worrisome for people if they think they've got a problem and they don't want to go get help, but um, trust me, everybody does at some point in life, and if they would go get that help, um, they can live a fulfilled life, hopefully. Well, and that's the problem with people that do um, the abuse is... Uh, they get that stigma. It's, it, I think it always starts mentally first. Um, and they're the problem. Mm -hmm. It's always put on the person that is, that's being abused that is the victim. It's right. their fault, whether it's, and especially with children. And that's why I think it's so hard uh, because, you know, kids, I mean, all they want to do is be loved. Absolutely. And they want to be liked and they want to be made proud of mm -hmm. and and they want you know and so when you take that away from them you strip them of that especially with a child all of a sudden they believe what an adult tells them right that they are a bad person that it is my fault that this is happening to me and that's why they don't speak out so much right and we need to change that we do need to change uh, that we need to make them feel comfortable and let them know that hey that's not acceptable, and there, there's better ways to handle that in growing up and let us know so that we can get you the help you need so that you can grow up healthy. Well, I think there's a stigma, too, that, um, you know, abuse only happens within the poorer population. You know, and that is not that, true That is not true. All. It happens in all walks of life. Yeah, all walks of life, and it doesn't matter what nationality you are. It happens in every single right. uh, walk of life, no matter what the income is or what color you are. Absolutely. Yeah, and if we can uh, stem that and, uh, I guess, you know, hit it full frontal, then we'll no, we can get this solved. It's it's not it's nothing that we can't do. It's just taking the right steps to get it done. And and it needs to be done. And um and 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 you can, and we can do it. That's how you that's how you end this vicious cycle of all the abuse that's taking right. place is starting with the kids. And and starting these programs, you know, when they're young and getting them the help they need. Be you know, your communities are a great resource. You got all kinds of uh programs out there but we need to do a better job of getting those programs um advertised so that they know that they're out there so they these people know that they can come and get help yeah because there is hotlines uh there's also like you said there's programs out there that will take you in right and uh, and life is precious it is i mean it really is you yeah. have this one life that we have and it's really up to like you said the community if you see something Let's make sure that we save that life. Right. Yeah. There's nothing more precious than life. And I think um, we have kind of lost touch with that in many places in, in, in this country. And, you know, there's nothing more precious than a life. And if we can bring that person up out of their hole, what a great um, thing that would be. Yeah. Yeah. Take them out of the darkness and show them that there is light. Absolutely. That there's happiness. And and that's got to be tough for officers. I've talked with other officers and, and you've been... Um, you know, you've been law enforcement for a quarter of a century. That's quite a while, 25 years. And you have had to have seen a lot 
of uh, this type of action taking place, whether it's against uh, a woman or a man or a child itself, which has got to be heartbreaking. How does that really affect, you, you know, the fellow officers as well? I mean, that's got to impact you guys emotionally and, and, and mentally, too, to be it, able to see that. It does, and that's one of the other things that we need to change is that officers out there, they, they feel it when they go home, and a lot of officers don't they feel like, oh, I can't go get help because that would make me look, you know, weak. Right. And that's not the case. Because I'm supposed to be the strong one right. here. I'm supposed to be the strong one. But, you know, we need mental health just as much as anybody else. Absolutely. And uh, I encourage any officer out there that's going through struggles to get that mental health. Yeah, I think that is so important. And I've talked about this with, uh, with other officers as well. And that, you know... Uh, you have just made such a great point. I think that that is what is so awesome and and I'm awed by by you is you talk about that um, straightforward. You get it out there. And uh, and that is really what what a leader is. Yes. I've got to tell you, 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 you talk about these things, and I'm so grateful to you for doing that. Mm -hmm. And also in letting people know that officers are real people, too. They're part of the community, and they Absolutely. suffer just as much as everybody else does. Absolutely. And I think one of the responsibilities of a leader is not just uh, running a, a sheriff's department in the jail, but going out there and getting involved in these programs and letting people know that it's okay to, to to be part of these solutions and get people interested in volunteering and doing the right thing in life. It's not just about being the sheriff and running a jail and making sure that everybody's taken care of and that your your deputies are um, enforcing the laws. There's a lot more to it than just just that. There is, and being part of the community, and that's what you do. Yes. Um, and and I just think that that is so fantastic that you go out, you are part of these programs, you do go and talk to people, whether it is at events or door to door. Uh, you're always open to be able to help somebody out, and that is. That's really, really impressive, and I admire you for that. Right. One of the things I encourage people to do, um, whether I'm off duty or on duty, is, you know, if you have a problem, go ahead and come up and talk to me. Um, you know, sometimes it's not always convenient, but I, I want to be able to help you if you've, because their problem may be a, a, a lot larger to them than it is to anybody else. But right. If I can help them out, what a great thing that I can do. And to be able to stop and be able to take that time. Yes. And do that for someone because it can be that moment right there that if it's ignored, all of a sudden that life is lost. Right. Or at least the hope uh, of them having a better life is gone. Right. And so for you to be able to do that, even though it, uh, we know you, uh, uh, Deputy Chief Officer, being a police officer, you guys are busy all the time. People are always, yeah. always needing something. I mean, you and, know, and want one, something from you. Right. And one of the things that I want to do is break that stigma because cops tend to hang around cops. Right. You know, we need to get out and, and be with the community better than, than what we have been. And so that we understand the community. We understand what the citizens are going through. Instead of just being uh, friends with just police officers or doing things with just police officers, it's kind of through time that's what's happened. And I think we need to break away from that and start being out with the community. And there's some really great uh, things that, that can be done, and I know you have thought about them. Um, if you become sheriff, I know that you plan on uh, uh, getting some of these outreach programs for the officers to be able to go out and do something for the event where, where Carroll County and the residents can actually come and meet you guys. I, absolutely. And be a part of that. And absolutely. I love that you want to do that because a lot of people do think with police officers, they think it's a good old boys club. They do, and, and it's they not supposed to be to that themselves, way. Right. and you are totally against that. Right, I am totally against that. I want everybody to to go out there and you know, like, put an officer in the school, not just as a resource officer. I'm just saying, go and go in there and visit with the kids, eat lunch with them, let them know that we're human, that they're human, and and let them know what we're about. Right, you know, not not just going in there because you're a resource officer, but go in there because you can and you just want to get to know the kids so that they get to know you and they and you can appreciate both and what's great about that too is that may encourage them to become a law officer absolutely as well, when yeah. they see how cool it is that absolutely you can be out and, and be a people person and and really enjoy especially being around kids i mean i remember when i was a kid that us kids looked up at police officers 
firefighters. I mean, they were they were our superheroes. Oh yeah, when I would see one, I, I would just be kind of like in awe, looking at all their their stuff and everything, and thinking, "Wow, that that's pretty cool." Yeah. And that's what I wanted to do, and and now I got the choice, and I did it. You know, it, it's not it's a good feeling. Yeah, and you and your brother both had that bug. Yes. Your twin brother, Mark. Right. Got a shout out to him, right? <laughs> That's right. <laughs> That's yeah. awesome. And so I just appreciate that so much. And, of course, uh, spring's coming, summer's coming, um, and uh, it's so much fun up in Carroll County because uh, baseball season is headed your way. Baseball season, and yeah. And big, Softball huge, season. Softball season. Big, huge sports fans up there, so it's going to be such a good time right. to be able to get out, and especially this year now that we're all opened up. And, and then on top of that, you got the lake. They people go out and they go on the lake, and then you got people that like to float down the river. We we've got a lot of good things going on in Carroll County. Yeah, a lot and, of good you know, things. Encourage. We've got um, great restaurants up there that people can go out and have a dinner, sit outside while they listen to uh, you know to Bob FM, and it's a good place. I appreciate the plug. Thank <laughs> you. Especially when you're running on those fantastic <laughs> trails, man. Oh yeah. Seriously, I mean there really is something for everybody. If you love out outdoor activities or you love food or you just want to join a really polite nice friendly community Carroll County is really where it's at and oh, there's yes. a lot of great things to be able to do there's a lot of great things to do in Carroll County it's a great community you know and just like you said going down the trails or going up on the river and so many good people there there's so many good people there my friend it is so great to have you here again and such wonderful words hope it encourages people out there to really become active in the community and the way that you can make your community better is to be aware of what's happening and if you see something say Say something. something Absolutely. Absolutely. And uh, you have definitely got a friend right here, uh, because I sure do, with Officer Michael Thomas, Chief Deputy Officer of Carroll County Sheriff's Department, um, 25 years experience, and uh, you are definitely a leader, not only for Carroll County, my friend, uh, but you make the state of Indiana proud as an officer, and I am really, really honored to know you. Thank you very much. I really appreciate you allowing me to be here. And you're going to come back, I, oh, absolutely. I, I, because you know you have a home here at Bob yeah, FM. I love it here. Yep. I love to have you here, too. It's our award-winning series, Talk Shop with a Cop. Once again, Chief Deputy Officer of Carroll County, yeah, my new friend, Michael Thomas. And, uh, of course, we've got this one for him. He is a Superman in my book, and if you ever get a chance to meet him, he'll be a Superman in your life, too. Thank you for being here. Thank you.